All right, good morning. Got a few folks on the line. We'll give it a few minutes or so for everybody to come on in. Hey, Amy, say something. I don't know if my audio is working. Oh, yeah, no, your mic works. You're, you are good. You are good. Thanks. We are, I'm holding a little bit because, well, one, not everybody's here yet. And uh, I kind of need all of you here. So. Okay, so we're three minutes after roughly by my clock and I also see that the app delivery folks are here, which is super helpful because we can kick off with them as far as um, for SIG updates, so. And I see most of our folks are in, so we'll go ahead and get started. Welcome, you have made it to the February 2nd TOC meeting. Um, because you are here, you have clearly made it in good fun. Um, we'll be talking about our new TOC members coming on in, but TOC members present today. Got an update from the various SIGs in here and probably some time for questions. So um, wanted to go ahead and get things kicked off in here. Um, elections closed yesterday and very, very excited to be able to see these new folks in here and you will get a chance to be able to introduce yourself, promises. Um, a big thank you to our outgoing TOC members, Brendan, Matt, and Zhang Li. Um, and I'll pass it over to Dave as you are our first official person on the list here. Uh, all right, I'm actually dropping my kid off at hockey right now, so I hope I, I'm on my phone. I hope I unmuted myself correctly, but I'm Dave. I've come at TOC for the past few months. Um, I'm an engineer on Spotify's platform team and have been in various CNCF and CNCF end user things for the past few years. Super. Thank you. Um, Ricardo, I'll pass to you. Ricardo might be stuck on mute. I'll give him a second. Sorry about that. Speak better. Cool. Yep. Cool. Excellent. You're great. So, um, I'm pretty happy to to join the TOC. Um, I've been working at CERN for uh, quite a while, and we've been using uh, CNCF uh, projects for for many years now. Um, I've been involved uh, a lot also in the research uh, user group. Um, of the CNCF, and I've been also participating a lot in KubeCons, Cloud Native Cons. So I'm looking forward to be able to help. Great, thank you. Um, Aaron, you're next. Uh, Aaron Boyd, I currently work for Apple and have been part of the TOC since forever. So excited to be serving in a, a more formal position and appreciate all the work Brennan, Matt, and Zhang have done uh, to lead the way and just happy to be here. Excellent. Um, Cornelia, 
Is she on the yeah. line? Go ahead. Hello, everyone. Um, Cornelia Davis, I am currently the CTO at Weaveworks. Um, I have been here for about a year. Um, prior to that, I was at Pivotal for seven or eight years, however long that was, where I worked both on Cloud Foundry um, as well as later in the last two or three years that I was there, worked on Kubernetes specifically, Kubernetes platform, um, had the great uh, benefit of working as well once I was working together with VMware and once VMware acquired Heptio had a chance to work with many of the engineers over there as well as people like um, Craig and Joe so that is kind of my background so I've been doing app you know app platforms for a long time um, and have been involved in Kubernetes now for four or five years um, more recently this year in particular have started getting more involved with the app delivery SIG um, and in particular one of the founding members of the GitOps working group that's under that umbrella. And I am absolutely over the moon to be able to and honored to be able to serve in this capacity, so thank you very much. Lovely, thank you. I don't see Harry kicking around in here. So we'll go ahead and move on if. if he happens to come on in, I will make him introduce himself. So with that, I will pass it over to Zig App Delivery. Go ahead. Yeah, hello everyone. So here's a quick update from Zig App Delivery. Just let me put my microphone over here. Current project reviews, um, Flux, now also with Flagger. Right? Flagger is currently working on um, merging with the Flux project or is in process. They requested to move incubation. The due diligence is uh, ongoing. First interviews, first interview has taken place. Some more to come, so this should be ready for the TUC to have a look uh, rather sooner than later. On the working group, so the operator working group, which or the operator work in thick app delivery, which has been around for quite a while, had some more momentum, and um, there have been some changes and also some really. Uh, Good work here, which I put on a separate slide because it deserves a separate slide this time. GitOps working group already mentioned Berconilium. Uh, the working group and the project uh, has been formed there. So it's kind of like this double existence of being a working group and a sandbox uh, a project, the sandbox project for the content created here, uh, which has been improved obviously very recently by the TUC. On some other activities, the Potato Hat project, so the demo project for deploying cloud native applications, which was initially created for a cube concession, um, has, has really been growing. And there's like lots more contributions from uh, the um, community. So this should obviously be Cube Vela. Um, so what it more or less does right now takes a simple um, one microservice Kubernetes um, object and deploys it with well, more or less the broader uh, cloud native app delivery ecosystem. So you can see a lot of projects, obviously from simple manifests to using Helm charts, to using Argo, to using Flux and so forth. And uh, there has been have new pro projects that were added just pretty recently, which is Kubevela, Customize, Nap and Gimlet, Gimlet and, uh, and OneChart in there. So we see continuous contributions from the community in the next step on that, um, Work we're doing there is obviously create a more complex example based on the initial requirements which we had, which was stateful workloads, uh, obviously multiple services, secret management, and so forth. On the CNCF landscape for app delivery, um, there's no update there yet, really, because we're not that actively working on this. Also, the work was more taking all of those projects and showing people how they can use it as uh, part of the work we did, which we did around Potato Head. On the next slide, there is a bit more detail on the app delivery, um, sorry, on the operator working group within SIG app delivery. We have three new chairs. Uh, Jennifer, Omar, and uh, Thomas have taken the lead here. They have been working on this for uh, quite a while. And uh, now we also have a timeline for the operator work um, uh, white paper. The team closely worked also with the security working group who recently did uh, their security white paper and took a lot of input from their side. They have a dedicated Slack channel in case you want to get um, involved with them. And there is now bi-weekly sync meetings. So the plan is to have something for review by mid of March 
and then the final version ready by end of April so that it will be more or less done done for Yupcon Europe. So that's the update from JGF Delivery. I think there was a question in chat. Yeah. It might be too long for now. <laughs> Go ahead. Um, quick question. I Flux and Flagger, is Flagger a sandbox project or is it completely separate right now? It is a separate project, but they merged it into Flux. And that's also part obviously of the due diligence that, that we're looking into. Okay. And that's going to, they're going to merge the two projects before they move to incubation yes. or not. That, that's what they're looking into right now. I think it was ongoing already before. Yeah. Uh, it's, it, it has been less unusual, honestly, that the projects that we recent, recently looked into uh, that we have more or less these more or less sets of projects that have individual parts that kind of make it together. So it's, and also from, uh, especially from uh, the Flux side, now with Flux V2, it makes more sense to have, the, to have them as a, as a combined set of projects. Um, yeah. Okay, Chris posted the sandbox link in there. Yeah, they merged a couple couple weeks ago or a few weeks ago. Yeah, so I think it's fair for the project to do to bring those two together, and it's part of the due diligence that they did it before moving to incubation, which I also think is a fair move, so that then the combined project can be looked at for uh, incubation. Okay, that was the only question in the chat. Yep. I don't see anybody else coming off of mute. So we'll go ahead and move on. Thank you. Contributor strategy, you're up next. <coughs> Howdy, everybody. Um, uh, uh, a few things. Um, first, uh, the new contributor site um, is almost ready. Um, for particularly for our new TSC members, uh, what we're doing is existing contribute.cncf.io is going to become a more sophisticated site where there's one route where if you're looking to contribute, it goes to the existing information about how to contribute to each project, although that will actually be HTMLified instead of just dropping you into Git. Um, and uh, then the other way will actually go to a whole site of information about uh, for project maintainers, um, you know, including things about advice on running your project and recruiting contributors and um, CNCF rules and and other things that we gradually build up, um, um, of which we have some things. Um, uh, we're currently in the process of configuring all the Netlify stuff and also finalizing which um, pages are ready uh, for publication and which ones still need to be approved by somebody. Um, so, um, and also uh, uh, Carolyn has been out, um, which is why it's not, one of the reasons why it's not already done. She's been leading that effort. Um, so expect to see that sometime soon. Um, I, for governance, um, we're doing final review and copy edit of a sub projects template. Um, this will give us sort of three standard governance templates for projects, um, one for projects that have a simple maintainer council set up, one for projects that have an elected steering committee, and one that projects that are composed of multiple sub-projects, which are the three most common models that we see. Um, although um, Linkerd is actually introducing, experimenting with a new um, concept, uh, for those of you who didn't see their announcement, uh, last week, um, which is they are creating a steering committee made up of end users um, as a way of bringing more people into the project in leadership positions. Um, so uh, we'll probably, we'll be, if the Linkerd folks can make it, we'll be discussing that at uh, 10 a.m. at the governance working group meeting. Um, it's an interesting model um, and I look forward to discussing it. Um, the um, a very early draft. Um, this is going to be one of our first requirement advisories 
Um, one of the things that have come up with projects recently is the um, we require projects to have open governance as part of the CNCF requirements, but we don't really define open governance. Um, and so as part of contributor strategy, we've been trying to add background material on all of the CNCF requirements for graduation levels. Um, and so uh, expect to see, there's a link to early draft of that when we finish the draft, expect to see that again for full TOC approval because um, anything that modifies the requirements you all have to approve. Um, the For contributor growth, a uh, bunch of documentation in progress, recruiting handbook, we've got a lot, a lot of questions about how do we recruit contributors. Um, uh, and uh, a generic contributor ladder document uh, in progress. Um, because it's something we've had a lot of other requests for. Um, final thing is, um, so I uh, see contributor strategy has had two liaisons to the TOC. Um, those two liaisons are going to be particularly important in the next you know, season because we are getting the new contribute website online. And for things that don't modify the requirements, um, our two sort of TOC liaisons are the ones who do final approval on those. Um, now, one of those approvers is Saad, um, who is still with us and still helping us out a lot. But the other one was Matt, um, who is now um, uh, retiring or at least cycling out of uh, the TOC. So we are looking for a second TOC member who's interested in the work of contributor strategy and willing to help with review and approval of stuff. Um, so if that's you, um, uh, please ping me uh, over chat or Slack, um, or better yet, the SIG contributor strategy channel on CNCF Slack. Thanks. Cool. I mean, um, other people can also like, can raise your hand here if you're interested in it. Um, I'm sure we're going to have that problem with like quite a few SIGs. So thanks for bringing that up. Any other questions here? Nope. Okay, we can move on. SIG Network. Lee, I know you're on the line. SIG Network. SIG Network. Hooray, come on in. Well, uh, first of all, just uh, Aaron, Cornelia, Lee. Awesome. Awesome. That's great. All right, so for SIG Network, we've been uh well we've been um busy with initiatives inside of the service mesh working group so the last three or more four meetings have been really dedicated to initiatives that are going on within that group of which there are a few last couple of times we met it um, much of the discussion and focus has been on um get nighthawk as a project um We've introduced this project, uh, I think, a, a couple of times here. I don't know that we've highlighted that there's some exciting features coming out of Nighthawk as a load generator, a sub-project of Envoy. One of those is the ability to do adaptive load control, which, and so we're engaging with uh, a couple of universities to do some studies around load analysis or adaptive load analysis in a distributed way. So, so we're, we're excited about some of that research. We'll see if we don't get to an opportunity to put the CNCF lab to use. Um, th the agenda for this upcoming uh, meeting on Thursday uh, centers around service mesh patterns. So it's, it's a topic um, within the working group. There have been a little less than 60 patterns um, identified. So patterns, um, being, well, in some respects, best practices, if you will, um, about how it is that people can employ and can use service mesh functionality. A lot of functionality there um, differs across service meshes. So the goal is to identify um, these patterns that are agnostic of the particular service mesh. And uh, this coming Thursday, there'll be a review of those patterns um, high level, but with um, a demo, uh, which will include um, the open, open application model, OAM, and Meshery 
um, and uh, which is a service mesh management plane. And so an integration of the two to, to allow people to take um, a given pattern as an example and uh, put, it, put it to action, put it into action. So, so that's the upcoming agenda. Um, the other items um, uh, at, on the plate um, is just the public review period or kind of the public comment for ambassador, which is proposed for incubation. Um, I think we're, you know, near, near as I can tell, we're currently revolving around um, naming uh, project project names and and how those relate to um, maintainers that are involved. And so I, I don't know that I have a an update there from from what we see on the on the public thread, but so uh, that's SIG network. Excellent. Um, there's a few questions in chat. Um, and as to your point about like the uh, uh, ambassador project, yes, that is that is tangled up in naming. So um, give that some time. But Cornelia, if you want to be able to unmute and come ask your questions in here, thank you. Yeah. So so I love this. You know, you said it kind of as a side comment about engaging with the university on some research um, and having that happen underneath the uh, the SIG umbrella. I, that sounds super exciting to me. There's so many elements of that engaging, you know, younger folks, bringing them in, um, you know, students, things like that, <clears throat> tapping into the vast knowledge that's in the universities. I wonder if um, whether there's anything, I mean, there's a whole story there and I, we can't take a ton of time here today, but I'd be super interested in hearing about that experience, any best practices, any tips, any guidance, how do we make something like that happen? Um, and maybe we can take that as a, you know, as a one-off sometime, but if you have any comments to start. Yeah, um, I won't take much time, but I'll say that I think implicit to what, to your um, excitement toward the, the topic is, is probably a number of shared points. One of them is that, um, well, by their nature, um, universities are kind of um, akin to the, the nature of the CNCF, and that is to be um, agnostic or to, you know, don't, don't really have skin in the game, um, so to speak. And so um, there have been a number of uh, unsolved questions around, well, in this case, around service meshes and um, microservices and distributed systems and behaviors and trying really trying to study and understand that. So first of all, some, some of those questions are, are deep and require people to think about it for a while. So um, uh, we've been, so it's, it makes good for university research. Um, and then, yeah, to be, to be all about the, the research itself and less about the outcome um, has been, it's been nice. We've been a bit, um, we've been intentional about reaching out to a couple of universities, um, either, either ones that were physically, geographically um, convenient, or um, so some of this has happened um, in a happenstance way where uh, we end up engaging with, oh, in the, um, well, the LFX or the Community Bridge Program, some of the GSOC, uh, GSOD, some of the, the internship programs that engage with communities or with um, college, not communities, with universities through those engagements with those students, that's led to discussions with their professors who have who are engaged in the particular field of study. And so um, some of that's been a little happenstance. I know um, there's a bit of, related to this, there's a bit of like, um, there, there are the CNCF ambassadors program, I think Cornelia of which maybe you wear multiple hats in this regard. Um, but th th there's been discussion about a uh, campus ambassador program and so that maybe a bridge to explore there. Interesting, yeah. There's more in chat from here. Um, Alloy, if you want to be able to talk about your European research project. Yeah, so we, what we also do, uh, we try to include especially open source related technologies now in the bigger European research project, um, as well with CNCF technologies and actively bring them in which usually works pretty fine because um, an European Union is interested in working more open source and also having more of this engagement in there. Um, and interestingly, funding is actually pretty good of those uh, projects. So 
Um, this is definitely helpful, uh, bringing in different projects and defining contributions. And uh, what we also did, like the easiest way, honestly, to engage with universities, what, what we found, and we're doing this now with uh, three Austrian universities, is just offering a basic course on cloud native technologies, especially in the master's programs. There is not a lot out there, and the universities are super happy doing this. So we, um, we our experience was when we were offering teaching people like how to use cloud native technologies, so whether it's Kubernetes, uh, it's about continuous delivery topics, service meshes, they're super open and allowing to even have these lectures on this. And this then usually leads them to, um, for example, us supporting a master thesis. And in one case, now we are going uh, even to PhDs, having a, like a more agreed curriculum that we could reuse, like all of us, because we most likely would teach very similar things and then would offer our time could, could be helpful. But that's, I think, the easiest step into, uh, I mean, at least I can speak for, for our local universities here. A lot of them don't teach many of the cloud native concepts. It's very traditional computer science, uh, but they're very open when they get access to these technologies. There is lots more in the chat. Um, Chris Ehor, I know you've been talking about some things in chat voice yeah and on, on the curriculum so one of our ideas oh, was yeah, curriculum. Have, Go ahead. <laughs> yeah uh, the, how to maintain the curriculum i think our plan was initially we started with uh some things internally but our plan was to have this more or less even open sourced going forward and if others are doing the same thing i think it would be a nice way to collaborate and, and keep in mind like some of those students depending on what you're targeting at you have to start maybe from, okay, this is a container, this is how orchestration works, this is how you build and deploy applications. It's not like the super high-end stuff necessarily, it's really getting them used to the technology that they can then dive deeper uh, into topics that they're interested in. And maybe also then reaching out to, to different projects where they have specific research questions, just as Lee pointed out, and then having local supporters there. But I think it, it would be a good way to collaborate around these topics. Yeah, and there are some resources available through CNCF. Um, I know, yeah, Ihor runs the mentorship program here. Um, but in the interest yeah, of time- I'm happy to chat. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I'm happy to chat. So if there are any questions regarding mentorship programs and how can be how they can be useful, we can we can move the dis discussion out of the current meeting. So we can, we can uh, chat on Slack or in some different way. Anyway, as Chris mentioned, please check out our mentoring report under the CNCF GitHub, so all the necessary information is listed there. This sounds like it might be a topic for another meeting as well. There's a lot in here. So. Awesome. All right, any other questions around SIG Network? Okay, we'll move on. Um, oh, SIG observability. Um, Richie, I know that there's probably not much from your side this week as the slide never got updated, but happy to pass to you. Yeah, um, there is a little bit of updates, but I didn't get around to updating the uh, slide, sorry. Um, so the main update is that there is a lot more uh, engagement between Prometheus and Open Telemetry, or not more, uh, it's increasing, ever increasing. Um, there's also now a Prometheus working group within Open Telemetry. Um, to um, work together on, on all the things. And I'm, I'm having a case of too many tabs because there was one more thing, the last meeting. And yes, I know I'm coming here pretty unprepared and I'm sorry for this. Richie, I'm willing to add uh, two more things for SIG observability. We have the uh, observability one-on-one -on -one, uh, training type stuff. So like blog posts and material is currently being worked on. We have a proposal for that uh, in part of the observability agenda. If people are interested in taking a look at the spreadsheet. Uh, and also, the, also talking about open telemetry, there is uh, paperwork now for uh, incubation proposals. So we'll be reviewing that as part of SIG observability for those interested. Yep. That's pretty much it. Great. Okay. Um, we can move on then. I don't see any other questions in chat. Things coming up. Runtime. Hey, 
everyone. Uh, uh, welcome to the new TOC members. Yeah, so um, I think not a lot of updates from uh, last time. We did actually have uh, two meetings, uh, but uh, we're continuing to engage uh, more projects and uh, reaching out to uh, more of them and uh, trying to get them to present in our meetings. So on the containers and runtime space, we have a meeting next uh, Thursday and that's six box. It's a um, project that allows you to run uh, containers like VMs. So for people who want to have that VM experience and, and but, but running and run the workloads in containers. Uh, so uh, we'll see uh, the presentation and, and it sounds like an exciting uh, project. And we also have been engaging more of the WebAssembly runtime projects. So um, there's a, a WASMR, WASM Time, and WAVM. Uh, so WASMR, uh, they are interested in presenting and uh, um, I've yet to actually hear back from them if they confirm or they are, they're gonna confirm for uh, February 18th. Uh, so uh, WASMR is one of the more popular uh, WebAssembly runtimes. You can embed uh, code in, or, or, or in, in embed in the language, uh, the, the runtime like uh, Go or Rust or Python, and you can also uh, run them as a standalone using the what they call the WASI interface, the WebAssembly system interface. Uh, and then WASM time is another runtime that is very similar to WASMR, and that is part of the Bytecode Alliance. And I think uh, there's some conversations about the Bytecode Alliance maybe joining the Linux Foundation, but that's not happening yet. But that's one of their projects. Um, and they also allow you to embed uh, or uh, WebAssembly in your code and also they support WASI. So um, hopefully we, we get them to present uh, soon. Another WebAssembly runtime is WABM, and we reached out to them, and they are written in C++. They're not as popular as the other ones, but uh, we still want to you get an overview and engage them. SWAM is another one, and they mentioned that uh, they need to get some uh, things together, and then they'll be presenting maybe later in the year. Now in the operating system space, uh, we had a presentation from Vortail, uh, and this is basically one of those operating systems or lightweight operating systems that allow you to run containers. Uh, so kind of like CoreOS or Talos, uh, some other projects that presented uh, previously in our meetings. And then REST CTL, uh, they are presenting sometime soon. They haven't scheduled it yet. Uh, they uh, responded yesterday. They they will. Uh, they're still interested in 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 presenting the project. And finally, in the AI ops and IoT space, uh, we did have a presentation from Kubeflow. Uh, that's uh, end to end machine learning. So from creating your uh, your models in your Jupyter notebooks uh, all the way to deploying to a production environment, serving that machine learning model and being able to uh, do the inference uh, while serving the model. So uh, yeah, they presented uh, uh, at our last meeting. So uh, pretty exciting. And, and this is um, one of the areas of the SIGs. So we're trying to get more of the machine learning or MLOps type of projects. And K3S is another project that we still uh, are talking uh, for them to present. Uh, they're part of the CNCF already, so we just want to get more engagement. And as far as um, uh, the run the SIG activities, uh, so uh, there's a KubeCon EU, so we're planning to submit a maintainer session so to get more um, involvement from the co community. 
yeah, and that's that's all I have for the updates. Uh, happy to take any questions, see if you have any. Um, doesn't look like a question, just looks like chatter over in chat, um, but happy to hear from folks. Oh, yeah. Um, Good chatter, though. A question, of, well, how do they, oh, no, that's a different one. <laughs> I really hope that some of these folks combine projects that's way too early. Yeah, so yeah, that's what Alina mentioned. So they're, they're, it's kind of early, so hopefully uh, they work together because yeah, they're doing different, or they're doing some of the same and, and you know, separately. And there's a, a org or, or a nonprofit called By Code Alliance, and they're trying to bring in and all the projects together. So hopefully they can bring in all the communities uh, so they all work together and they come up with the same standards. They, I mean, they're coming up with the standards, but the, but the, hopefully they come up with the same implementation. So, so there's more of a clear winner. Um, um, and yeah, and this will be helpful for people adopting it and, and basically uh, using more for cloud native environments. Uh, and then, yeah, WebAssembly is that, I mean, we had a meeting, uh, TOC meeting a few weeks ago, and it's um, very similar to what the JVM is. Uh, so you create this bytecode and it can be run in any platform or it can be run in, on the web. Uh, so, so it's very uh, um, transferable and you can, uh, yeah, run it anywhere, and so that's one of the things that it, that it's very attractive. Um, so we'll see where it goes, and but but it it seems like uh, there's a lot of people are interested. So uh, there's another comment that says, "Oh, for anyone working on a new uh, runtimes, our CFP is open." Okay. Oh, con container plumbing. Oh, yeah. So there's a conference. Uh, and that's we'd love to have a speaker on while well sometimes. Okay, yeah. So for those who wants to, somebody fr from the audience can submit something, or we can reach out to some of the members of the SIC to submit a, a proposal there. I think there's also an event happening, uh, KubeCon for WebAssembly. Um, so if, if somebody's interested in submitting WebAssembly talks, then it would be great to get more traction in the area. Yeah, and then Chris uh, actually uh, posted the, the the link on the chat. CFP is open. Yeah. CFP is open. Yeah. So. All right. Thank you. I I don't think we've got anything else, so thank you. We'll move on. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Six security. JJ, you did in fact not miss anything. Go ahead. <laughs> Cool, cool, cool. Thanks, thanks, thanks. Yeah, I mean, like I was worried because I woke up late and joined late. So, <laughs> uh, uh, six security. I think we've been uh, pretty uh, busy the last uh, few months, and uh, I think uh, uh, people have seen white paper uh, come out. <laughs> There's a lot of interest for the white paper, and translation efforts have been uh, started for the white paper. As you can see, uh, there's one Chinese translation. PR spending uh, it'll get merged. <clears throat> There's also Portuguese translation. Somebody picked up uh, that they wanted to translate that to Portuguese. So uh, that is one effort that's going on. <clears throat> Membership also, we sort of uh, increased to 72 members from 52 different organizations uh, across and pretty active participation. Uh, the other effort that I think got started was uh, uh, we spun up uh, Supply, secure supply chain working group. Uh, there are a few projects that are of interest there. I think if anybody who's interested in that, I think should join. Uh, given all the breaches and stuff that are happening, I think it will be a, a nice one for everybody to get to know uh, and contribute if, if anyone has any time. Uh, there's been a lot of demand for a different time zone uh, to join the meeting. Um, it's been there for the last few, I mean, last six, seven months, uh, that's always been an ask, but we just didn't want to move early and create something where there will only be two people attending that meeting. So we sort of pushed it out and now officially we launched uh, APAC friendly uh, meeting time. 
and if anybody is outside of here wants to join that i think uh, that'll be a pretty good way to get engaged with six security <clears throat> there'll be cross pollination between that meeting and this this and uh, we'll probably transfer content over from this to that uh, from the us time zone meeting to the apac time meeting uh, we also kick started a serverless security white paper uh, that's starting and that's in the works uh, it's at the early stages if anybody is interested in contributing to that please uh, reach out to members in the six security i think they'll get you connected uh, that's mostly about it from my side any questions any thing that i can answer doesn't cool. look like it so thank you thanks Amy. yeah we'll move on sig storage is this what you wanted or do you want me to reload it uh if you could reload it I'd appreciate okay give it. me thank a hot you. minute sorry it's my okay, turn to make last minute changes that's okay you get one free pass this is your one like all year <laughs> just so you know <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's see what it does. We'll just run through everybody else's slides first. All right, much better. Your turn. All right then. Um, so the Longhorn project, we do need to sync up with SAD uh, and uh, um, review the uh, incubation process and, and go through the DD. Um, we also had uh, a new project, uh, Chabu FS, who uh, that project was one of the first projects we we put through as uh, as sandbox um, from the SIG, and, and now they're looking to move to uh, incubation. So that's exciting. Um, I'm going to reach out to the project to uh, to ask them to present at the next SIG call, so we can um, so we can review the current status. And Open EBS, we have currently ongoing. Uh, discussions with with the project team, and we need to make some decisions there. Um, we have been working uh, on the last two meetings um, on uh, a project presentation and and a, and a disaster recovery document. Um, disaster recovery uh, document is 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 particularly exciting. We've um, we've had a new uh, member in the SIG, uh, Raffaele Spazzioli who has uh, contributed uh, the bulk of the content and we're looking for uh, comments on uh, the disaster recovery document. Um, we're, we're kind of trying to figure out if we're going to look to publish this as a standalone document or, or to merge it with um, the, larger, uh, the larger white paper. We're, we're just exploring different ways of, of structuring it. Um, but, uh, but nevertheless, uh, comments very, very welcome on that. Um, and we had a presentation of, uh, of uh, Vineyard, which is a project by Alibaba, um, which is uh, a fairly innovative use of uh, a distributed um, shared memory to help with um, analysis and, and, and various um, various uh, data management across across uh, uh, Kubernetes clusters um, for very complex data sets. So, so it's a, it's a it's a bit niche, but it's it's a very uh, interesting technology. They plan to submit to uh, to the sandbox uh, review process. Um, and finally, what I'd like to talk about is um, we're we're going through a process to um, recruit some additional tech leads. Um, mostly because the TOC keeps um, stealing members of our of our little SIG with with Saad first and, and now Aaron, um, but we have we have two uh, great candidates, um, um, Raffaele, who I mentioned, who who has been uh, the focal point for our uh, disaster recovery uh, document, and uh, Sheng Yang, who uh, from Rancher, who has been. Um, uh, contributing to the SIG and, and working with us uh, for, for quite a while too. Um, so I plan to uh, get bios and submit them to the TOC mailing list to start the vote process. Uh, and that's me. Excellent. Good 
Alright, fun. Um, any questions in here? Anything rising? Okay. Um, of note, the next sandbox annual, sorry, the sandbox review process is going to be on March 23rd. Um, and I have put this over in the public meeting working docs so that everyone knows when that's coming. Um, we'll probably have more conversations about that, but uh, that's kind of upcoming pieces in here. Um, and yeah, welcome to our new TOCM members. I, I think that's pretty much it for the day. Any other questions, comments, things that people wanted to cover? Okay, then I'll let you all go. Good to see everyone. Bye. Bye, Bye thank all. You. Bye. Bye. Bye.